Welcome to the Prepped and Polished Podcast, the podcast that empowers you to take control of your education, featuring weekly interviews with influencers in the world of education, as well as tutoring tips, lessons, and updates. And now, here's your host. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another tutoring tips episode of the Prepped and Polished Podcast. It's Terry of Prepped and Polished. Please be sure to check out our website, www.preppedandpolished.com. For tutoring in person or online, call us at 781-753-9951 or chat with us instantly on our website. You can join our Prepped and Polished community on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Prepped and Polished. If you have a question after the show, please ask us a question on the chat feature on our website. We love hearing from you. So let's get right to episode number 197 on how to avoid three pitfalls of rhetorical skills questions on the ACT English test. Part three, order of sentences in a paragraph. One thing to remember is that the ACT English test has two types of questions, usage and mechanics and rhetorical skills. The rhetorical skills questions cover style, strategy, and organization. Most of my students dread the rhetorical skills questions and find these the most difficult and time-consuming. The usage and mechanics questions focus on grammar and punctuation, word usage and sentence structure, and I mean some of them are still difficult, but it's the rhetorical skills questions that students seem to have the most difficulty with. One common rhetorical skills question is order of sentences in a paragraph. And here are seven steps to tackle order of sentences on the ACT English test. And if students follow these steps, it should be much easier. So first, when they're taking the test, um, they should pay attention to bracketed numbers at the beginning of each sentence in a paragraph. That's a red flag that there'll be a question about sentence order. So as they're reading, you know, they can kind of keep that in mind. Now, sentence order is determined by a clear, logical flow from one sentence to the next. That's step two. (laughs) Step three, the topic of one sentence must connect, must connect, (laughs) to the topic of the previous sentence and the sentence that follows. So there's really three sentences that work together and they all have to be connected and make sense together. Step four, try the sentence in different places to find the only place where that sentence will connect to what came before and what comes after. I'll give you a quick example after. Uh, Step five, look for a sudden shift in the action that's, that's a very clear indicator, a good sign that the sentences are out of order. Knowing transition words really helps. They can indicate that the sentence should be an introduction or a conclusion or that a pair of sentences should go back to back. So transition words are very important. In part one, I reviewed three categories of transition words, continuers, contrast words and cause and effect. It's good to review those. That helps students a lot. And of course, use POE, process of elimination. That's step seven. Those seven steps can be very, very helpful. There was, there was one example from a real ACT English test that was all about crochet hooks of various sizes. And it was a very good one to show students how to apply those seven steps. One, one other extra tip that I found is as, you, as a student's reading the uh, paragraph, there's often words in sentences that if you circle them, they indicate what order the sentences should be in. For example, the crochet passage, some sentences were about big crochet hooks, some were about tiny hooks to make smaller items, and medium hooks. So this is how a typical question would be worded. For the sake of the logic and coherence of this paragraph, sentence six should be placed. And they give choices like where it is now, after sentence one, 
after sentence three or after sentence seven. And a student has to look for the logical flow, topics that connect from one sentence to the other. They have to try the sentence in different places because there's only one place it can fit. They have to look for a sudden shift, like I said, transition words, and use process of elimination. In this particular paragraph, sentence six said these hooks make big stitches so you can finish a project with them very quickly. It had to be after sentence three, which was talking about large hooks. It was the only place it could go. It was a logical flow, a logical transition. So those are some tips that can really help students with order of sentences in a paragraph. They, they usually look at it and think, oh no. <laughs> One other tip I can, can provide is that rhetorical questions, um, like this order of sentences in a paragraph, typically take longer than the usage mechanics questions on the ACT English test. So if a student completes two questions per minute, there's 75 questions, they'll have approximately seven to eight extra minutes to spend on reviewing tricky rhetorical questions. This wraps up our show, episode number 197, How to Avoid Three Pitfalls of Rhetorical Skills Questions on the ACT English Test. And this was part three, order of sentences in a paragraph. Be on the lookout for our next podcast episode number 198, which will be our next interview with an educational expert. Remember to access all of our podcast episodes. Go to www.preppedandpolished.com forward slash podcast. Thanks for joining us on the Prepped and Polished podcast. Now go out there and take control of your education. You've been listening to the Prepped and Polished podcast. For more information, check out preppedandpolished.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Class dismissed.